Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. I'm back here at Moss Nissan in Newport Ritchie, Florida, because guess what? We have a 2020 Nissan Maxima. So let's talk a little bit about the Nissan Maxima. Nissan Maxima, as you can see, is a full-size family sedan. There was a little term that Nissan gave to the Maxima quite a few years ago, a four-door sports car. They called it a four-door sport. They actually said 4D SC. What they were trying to get at is that even though their Maxima was four doors, it performed very, very sports car like. Maxima basically has been around since 1976. Of course, in those early years, it was known as a Datsun, but then things would change. And with this 2020 Maxima, it harks back to that tradition of having a car that is definitely more sporty, but can we still call this? Nissan Maxima, this 2020 Nissan Maxima, a four-door sports car, and really is the Nissan Maxima a four-door family car to really go up against the others like the Accord, like the Camry, the Avalon, all those different choices that you have out there. So let's go ahead and get into this Nissan Maxima. So right off the bat, 2019 was a big year. They did a restyling and that carries, of course, into 2020. They did a totally revamping of the headlight design. I like what they did with the LED daytime running lamps and also very intricate detail how the front fender melds right into the headlight housing. Now, as we come down, you do have some gloss black fake venting. If you go up the trim levels, they put fog lamps in here. Not very large, but it does take up some of the space. I am gonna zonk this. I wish this was a functional side air curtain at least, or just make it a lot smaller or just smooth. As we come across the front, this is Nissan branding, their V-shaped grille. I don't care what Nissan you look at here at Moss Nissan, they all have that V-shaped grille design. Chrome V, there's your large Nissan badging. You have some gloss black um, grille, both top and bottom. Little bit of chrome as well across the bottom just to make it cohesive. And the rest of this is gloss black. Now, it looks really good now as new, but I'd be curious over years, how is this gonna wear? But definitely they've made a big improvement bringing the styling up on this 2020 Maxima. Now, as we go up onto the hood, you can see the body line start on the front fascia, go up onto the hood, and then check this out. There's like a raised center section that kind of V's out and then goes towards the windshield. Gives it definitely a different kind of look than say an Avalon or a Camry or an Accord or whatnot. Now, as we come around the bend, you can see how the headlight housing wraps around. This is gonna be your standard wheel. You can get a 19 inch wheel. This is an 18 inch wheel. So it's machined uh, aluminum, gloss black. You know, it, it's a little bland and I would recommend going up the trim level to get the 19 inch wheel, but the color is definitely working with the actual color of the car. So uh, I could definitely say that. Now, as we go, down the fender, check this out. You have your body line here, curves down into the door and then curves ba back up and flattens out. Chrome on the door handles, chrome on the bottom portion of the window frames. And then that chrome is gonna match with the chrome that's on the front of the car. Gloss black on the mirrors, larger turn singles built in. I wish they would slim these down. So I am gonna zonk that just for being a little too large, but I like the way that they blacked out the eight pillars and then we have a dual panel panoramic sunroof plus guess what thank you nissan they blacked out the whole thing if you notice here on rady's rise there's been other brands that we've been doing panoramic sunroofs with and they they leave the rest of it painted the same color of the car it looks great blacked out i like the way that they went gloss black up top because look as we come to the rear pillar you have that floating roof design so Having the blacked out A pillar and the rear pillar here gives it that floating roof design. I like the way that the rear fender kind of flares out. And then when we come around the back, it's sort of like that same thing, which let me get this out of the way, sort of the same thing with the rear taillights. I like the way it integrates into the side, comes around, you have LED uh, brake lights, the chrome trim looks really good. This is an SL trim. Remember, you could go all the way up to platinum SR, and then you're actually gonna have decorative exhaust now i like the quad exhaust look it looks almost very mercedes-benz amg i wish that the pipes would just attach to these decorative pieces but at least these are actual functional like there's i could put my hand through here and it's not going to hit a piece of plastic i'm not digging this 
fake vent here i wish they would just have done something a little different here maybe make the exhaust openings a little bit larger and slim that down so i am going to zonk that but the rear diffuser area very clean let's go ahead though pop the hood see what's powering this nissan maxima all right guys time to check out underneath the hood what you're going to find is that same setup that's been under the hood for a maxima for a little while now that's a 3.5 liter v6 300 horsepower 261 pound feet of torque the car weighs about 3,552 pounds. I think really for me, the Zonk and the weak link in the chain is gonna be that CVT transmission. I wish that they would give it a different style transmission, but still zero to 60, 5.8 seconds, quarter mile, 14.1. So it's not a slouch. Also, you can see the back portion here, how they brace it. There's actually bracing going on to kind of stiffen up the front end of this car. Being front wheel, dri uh, front -wheel drive, it's gonna have some unique handling characteristics that are unsports car like. Imagine this thing with real wheel drive. Now we're talking 400 horsepower. Sign me up. Nissan Maxima, get rid of the CVT. I think you got a winner. But overall, I think this is another nice option to have at least. You don't have to just go the Avalon or the Camry or the Accord or whatever. You could actually, if you like the styling, if you like the way it drives, come check out this Maxima. But let's go ahead, fire it up, and see what the 3.5 liter V6 sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside the 2020 Nissan Maxima SL trim. I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, if you're gonna compare this to the Avalon, the Camry, the Accord, how much is this? Now, remember, this is gonna be larger than a Camry and Accord. I'm just kind of throwing those in because I know those are very popular choices for a family, uh, but you do have the Avalon and whatnot. This comes in at MSRP, almost right about $40,875. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Now, I love what's going on there. Lots of different colors. I like the tan. I like the dark black. The contrast stitching looks beautiful. I even like that plastic trim that looks like metal, and it's got like a diamond cut to it. I'm really digging that. So they did a great job there to bring up the fit, feel, and finish of the door panels. On the dash, you have that same soft material, the simulated stitching here, contrast, which is nice. There's that diamond cut finish in the plastic is harder here but you're probably going to touch here a lot more than you are down there the ac vents nicely integrated into this raised portion very slim you know there's nothing too fancy going on and then you have an eight inch infotainment system like you see with navigation we could go into menu is it touch screen of course it's touch screen but if you don't want to touch the screen if you're like i have a phobia of touching uh screens you could just touch the buttons and that will work as well but i got to get back to here before i could do that so that brings us there you have your audio controls camera we hit camera you're going to be able to uh get into different settings with your camera there's the camera out the back you could adjust all the options let me actually put it in reverse while i have tom here and it does give you the directional which is nice um it's a little pixelated but at least it fills up the whole screen i'm happy about that dual climate control easy to use easy to get to you open up this little guy here you have a nice deep cubby it's actually felt line so if you have uh, a gold-plated cell phone you could actually have it in here and not scratch it uh, usb-c a usb and an aux jack all in one and then guess what you close it and the lid is done this brushed aluminum looks really great. You have your start stop button here. This is gonna be controlling that CVT transmission. You have the simulated stitching, the leather. I like the leather boot, two cup holders, heated seats, but not ventilated seats. That's a zonk, $40,000. I want ventilated seats and I want it now. You have this really nice, almost like a BMW style iDrive controller that if you don't wanna to touch the screen, you don't wanna to touch the buttons, you could actually touch this and it'll actually um, change everything up. Sport setting, you put that into sport mode, that's gonna adjust the parameters of the engine, the gearbox, all that stuff, and then you can easily shut your traction control. I think one of my favorite parts of the center console is I like the uh, leather here with the contrast stitching. Armrest is soft as a baby's butt with the stitching. Open it up, more felt lining, so no felt was spared in the making of this Maxima. You have a good amount of space. I wouldn't put any food in there unless it's in a wrapper, but definitely you could probably stack up, I would say two, four, maybe six Twinkies. It'd be a little tight, but if you're hungry, go for it. Seats, I don't like the tan uh, color, but I do like the material, nice and soft, perforate in the center, stitch work. Of course, you're gonna have full electric assist on both passenger and driver's side, so that is a big plus. And you know what, the tan looks good. 
I just know long term, especially if you have kids, they're going to get stickiness all over it. They're going to pick their nose. You do have the optional Bose upgraded sound system and then a dual glass panoramic sunroof. Nice and large, easy to use. Mirror, I'm going to zonk just because it is not frameless. It's good though because it's the auto dimming kind and you could hook up your uh, garage door opener to that. But why don't you get over the business side because guess what? There's a sporty looking wheel here and if this is a four door sports car, I want to show you the business end. All right, guys, business end. One thing I'm a little concerned about is that there's no memory settings for a $40,000 car, but you do get the stainless steel touch here. Maxima lights up. I promise you just need to be in a tunnel or a cave or at least the sundown to see it light up. Here's your electric assist. I like the, the lower uh, lumbar. I like putting that in pretty much full blast really to help my lower back. Steering wheel, I'm actually digging it. It looks like it's out of a faster car for sure. Flat bottom, like the thickness, the stitch work, the perforated leather. It feels like a high quality piece. The switch gear is a little older, but you know what? It's flat black and it's easy to use and whatnot, which I like. You could also easily shut off all that Nissan uh, sensory technology, the lane keep assist, all that kind of stuff very easily, cruise control. And then the dash setup, you have an analog tack, you have an analog speedometer, but in the center there, you do have a nice uh, display. It's uh, about, I would say about six inches uh, worth of space there that you could scroll through all sorts of information, which is really nice. There's your uh, oil temp and your um, speedometer in the center there. But really nice to have that kind of function. And it is super clear. So definitely the technology side on that screen is really nice. But why don't we go ahead? Front is really great. Let's see if your passengers are going to be liking this four door sports car. All right, guys, backseat time in this Maxima. We're looking around. I do like the way the leather comes all the way around the backs of the seats. You have plenty of room in here, but it would have been nice if they just kind of notched out the back just to give you a little bit more room. Say you have, uh, you know, somebody really tall like Michael Jordan or something, and they got to move the seat back. Uh, it would be nice to have that space in the back of the seat, but I'm glad that's leather. Two AC vents with some nice silver trim. You got a USB-C and a standard USB, so it's great to see that. That means they care about your technology and your stuff going dead. When it comes to the ceiling, I'm pretty good. Now, if you have a hairdo that's really tall, you might feel a little squished in here. So I'm feeling pretty good overall, but you're really just gonna have to take that into consideration. I guess my advice is sit up front, don't sit in the back. Fold this guy down, boom. Nice soft armrest, two cup holders, and then you got plenty of room here for some Slim Jims or Twizzlers, those individually wrapped ones, because we know we don't want to get sticky stuff on the nice tan um, interior. But other than that, feels really good. Let's go ahead and check that out the trunk and see what kind of space we have in the Maxima. All right, guys, time to check out the trunk on the Maxima. Do you need an SUV? Let's see what kind of room we have. Now, when it opens, I'll be honest, I'm going to zonk the actual opening. It's a little on the tighter side, but once you fight something past this opening, there is a really good amount of space, plus the floor is really low. So if you have something that's taller, you'll be able to get it in the trunk once you fit it past this opening. Um, you do have the 60-40 split, and the way it works is, is you're just gonna pull these handles, and that's gonna fold down the seats. These other guys are here. This is nice engineering that if you have some groceries, you can hang the bags here, so all your tomatoes and Campbell's Soup and all that, which we are sponsored by Campbell's Soup, is not rolling around, but let's go ahead, take this for a spin. By the way, we're not sponsored by Campbell's Soup, but let's take this for a spin. All right, guys, we just left Moss Nissan. We're in the 2020 Nissan Maxima SL trim. Let me go ahead and get on that loud pedal. It does have plenty of get up and go. The problem is with a CVT, it holds the RPM just so high that it doesn't really have the best like sound to it or does it really have an engaging feel to the drive? Uh, it's not as you're going through gears because there's no gears in a CVT transmission. All right, guys, one thing I'm noticing about driving this 2020 Maxima, first of all, the seats are, are very, very wonderful. Uh, they're not only supportive, but comfortable at the same time. And with all the adjustments you can make, you can really fit it to your particular body type. Now, I do have it in sport mode, and it's nice that they have that option, and it really does adjust the parameters of the vehicle while it's running. Also, I like the choices that they give you for that digital display in between the tachometer and the speedometer. 
Um, really clear and the colors are like 21st century. Like I feel like I'm looking at a display that is definitely from recent years rather than something that's like 10 years old. The infotainment screen is a little flat. And what I mean by that, the colors aren't really working for me. Um, and it's a little dated. Uh, which is which is obviously going to be a zonk, but these are things that I'm sure when Nissan one of these days redesigns the whole Maxima, it's gonna it's gonna change. I do like the way that the screen, the whole thing is angled towards me, the driver, rather than the passenger. I know for some of you who are still rocking out the CDs, you like to still have your CD player uh, conveniently placed. AC controls are real easy to use. Um, just like I said, it's it's the the map system that they're using is a is a little dated on the Nissan Maxima, but steering feel is nice. I love the steering wheel itself, and then visibility is really good. You don't feel like you're in a super large car, to be honest with you. Uh, another thing that I noticed that I'm really digging is that raised center section that I pointed out to you. I really like uh, how high it is, and it gives nice definition to the hood as you're driving down the road. All right, guys, we're gonna take it down a little twisty road to see how she handles. On the brakes, brakes feel good. Really, it corners really flat for a car this size, so I am impressed by that. Uh, right now, I'm not really feeling the huge downside to the CBT, but I know as I turn up the wick that that's gonna happen. Um, I also like the leather hood that they put. It just looks good when you're looking down at the dash. Just little things like that, little touches. But I'm digging the feedback that I'm getting from the front end of the car. Let's uh, take this a little quicker. So we're on the brakes, into this left-hand bend, on throttle. Not too bad. If I could ask for a little something, I would just like a little bit more weight from the steering, and I would like some paddles. Um, that I could shift, or should I say simulated shifts through that CVT transmission. Um, but other than that, the way that the car handles is quite impressive. I also feel like the engine is very strong. Just sitting in neutral or in park and revving the engine, it's got a great sound to it and it really revs up very, very freely and very quickly, which is nice. On the brakes, I'm telling you, there's no Brembo's or anything like this. Brakes are feeling good, coming out of the corner. It's just that constant RPM is annoying and it just kills the overall engaging drive. But definitely, this Maxima can be hustled through these bends. Really nice, look at this. And the traction, traction control did its job without being too overbearing. I'm liking that. And I would love to put this up against some of the other competitors in its class to really see performance wise, is this the four door sports car compared to the other makes and models? That would be very fascinating, but definitely plenty of room up here. Visibility is great. I love having the panoramic sunroof. And overall, I think that it's a car that you'll appreciate a little bit more once you get behind the wheel. If you're just looking at spec sheets, it may not sound that impressive, but could you imagine this car, 350, 400 horsepower, rear wheel drive with an actual like DCT or a eight speed, 10 speed automatic, sign me up. Sign me up, I think this thing would be a blast to drive. Still good, just not the greatest. That's what I could say. But we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up and get back to Moss Nissan, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, been another wonderful day, magical day here at Moss Nissan. Definitely gonna thank David Moss and the rest of the crew for allowing us access to this 2020 Maxima. Is it a car that you really should seriously consider? I would say yes. Does it have some areas where it could need some redesign, some improvement? Sure, there is no perfect car, but I really think that it's great to have options, and I'm hoping and I'm praying that Nissan will give it the justice that it needs and just do a full out redesign and make it that four door sports car that they claim it to be. But if it's cars like this you wanna see on Ready's Rides, leave a comment in that comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Ready's Rides family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description, get yourself some Ready's Rides merch. Gotta give it up to Big Guns McGee. 
he was here lifting the front end of this Maxima off the ground because guess what? He has a powerlifting competition coming up, going for the gold. Wish him luck. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.